Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to my channel, Watch Time LA. Hello folks, before we get to this review on this absolutely gorgeous watch, I'm going to let you know why I have been gone for so long. For those of you who just want to skip to the watch review, I'm going to put the time to skip to in the video in a couple of seconds. In the meantime, I'm going to be telling you where I've been and what's been going on in my life in under three minutes. First, we're going to start with I was about, I don't know, three miles away from this mass shooting in Thousand Oaks, California, so now you know where I live, and which claimed a dozen lives, and it was a complete tragedy. It really uh, changed the neighborhood here, uh, ho hopefully for the better. You know, you never know what a maniac's going to do. Whatever side of the debate you're on, this is a tragedy. And then we move on to just a few days after that. This is what it looked like in my neighborhood. In fact, this right here was just two blocks away. We were completely surrounded by fire from all directions, 360 degrees around me to the north, the south, east, and west. I'm going to put up a picture here in a minute. You'll have a satellite view. To the north, I couldn't get actually how far. I couldn't get it all in the one shot anyway. You'll see how far it went. But just up the street from me, several houses burned down. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The firefighters here are just amazing how they've saved some of the homes. They saved my entire development. And we owe a never-ending debt to these men and women who put their lives at risk every day to help us. We were evacuated for three days, and what you're seeing right now is the area all around my neighborhood. In fact, we're zooming in here right now on where I live. We were completely surrounded, burned out, and saved. And then I was off to Paris. Well, actually not Paris. I landed in Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and traveled to a little city called Nantes, it's actually spelled N-A-N-T-E-S. In the States here, we might look at it and call it Nantes, but it's actually said Nantes. In fact, not a lot of people there speak any English whatsoever. But we got around, a friend and I, uh, my sister actually was with us as well, and uh, we were having a grand old time seeing the sights. Uh, it's, there's a lot of water in Nantes. Uh, and a lot of food, a lot of cheese, a lot of pastries, and boy, some of the best bread you'll ever see anywhere. It was an absolutely fantastic trip. Uh, it was Christmas time, so the city was decorated. And the next thing you know, you're walking around and boom, you're in the hospital. Where I spent the next four days and had a surgery and wound up extending my trip because I couldn't leave. <laughs> and this is what I saw on my 24th day as I finally left France going through Amsterdam and I, to get in the Christmas spirit here. It was one of the most miserable trips of my life, 23 hours of travel door to door and it was... <laughs> Just absolutely brutal. Now, you know my life story. On to the review. Shh. Be very, very quiet. We don't want to disturb it. This is one of my favorite watches. It took me a little while to get it in this position. You'll notice that it's not moving at all. If you look real close, let's see how close you can actually look. 
if I can get this to move, yeah. You might be able to see in the date window, or maybe not. <laughs> Sorry about that. You might be able to see in the date window. The date is correct. But the watch isn't moving at all. The second hand's not moving, minute hand's not moving, nothing. Let me show you what's going to happen here. You only get one chance at this. So here we go. Watch this. I'm not fast forwarding. This is real time. What's happening is I've awoken the watch from a sleep. It's been sleeping for about three months. I think since November. But you'll notice the date is right. The month is right. And the year, everything is correct. In fact, if you look in the little window right here, you'll even notice the leap year is correct. What's about to happen is a modern marvel in itself. This watch awoke from a three month sleep knowing exactly what time and what second it is. Exactly where it left off. And it's gonna adjust that time. Here in about a second we should be all caught up and there it is. It knows exactly what time it is, what day it is, even though it hasn't been run in three months. And let's look at the second hand for a second. You'll notice it's ticking once every one second. There we go, that's a better look. If it were ticking once every two seconds, that would be an indication that the battery was very weak. Well, how does the battery get charged? We'll get into that in a second. Now, I'm not normally big into the unboxing thing, but I think for this particular watch, it's important. I'll show you why in a minute. Now, I haven't done a video in a while. I explained that a moment ago. Uh, I've been recovering from this surgery, and it has been a bitch. i got to tell you, it's been one of the most difficult things um, I've gone through in a long time. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been trying to get back in shape, doing my hobbies and whatnot. This is a little guy I just finished. Another thing I love doing is refinishing old knives. Uh, I don't have the before pictures on this, unfortunately. But this is a 40-year-old uh, boning knife. It has. It was uh, in water for quite a long time. All the grain was destroyed and raised, and I just sharpened that. It will cut a piece of paper effortlessly, and when the owner sees this for the first time, they're not going to believe it's even the same knife. Anyway, another one of my little hobbies. This is a normal Seiko box. Almost every uh, mid, you know, mid-range Seiko you get is going to come in this box. White outer skin that pulls in and out. And the Seiko with this uh, uh, textured uh, box in this one center. And on the other side, um, half the time, the label will be upside down, half not. This Seiko model, by the way, is the SNP 108. It says uh, on Amazon Japanese model. So I don't know if this was supposed to be sold in the States, uh, but it is. Uh, you see the price there. Bow, wow, holy cow. That is expensive. I didn't pay that. It is one of the most expensive Seikos in the mid-range line until you get to um, some of the higher-end Seikos, obviously. The box is a normal Seiko box, like I said. It comes with a standard pillow, and the watch comes inside as so it kind of this one was kind of floating around i will tell you something although this is one of my favorite watches this is one of the few watches i actually returned shortly after i got it two things were wrong with it number one is something happened with the bracelet i couldn't open it so i, I didn't want to break it and have them say i broke it so i returned it i don't know what failed inside this mechanism but it wouldn't open it was like bound and i don't know what happened to it uh, and i can i can fix anything but i'm not going to play with this $700 watch and have them say, well, you messed up. You, you scratched it or broke it, whatever. So I did return it and it had one other odd problem. I couldn't set the time properly. 
Uh, I followed the instructions to the letter, and no matter what I did, it, it would always come back on after sleep, and it would always be off considerably. And it wasn't like by an hour uh, for daylight savings time. It was off by some weird amount. And I decided for both of those reasons, I don't know if I got a, you know, somebody returned it and had, they sent it back out again. I don't know. But I'm just glad I got a brand new one after that. Before we go into this watch and all of its features, I just wanted to show you some other interesting watch that I have. By the way, this I bought uh, about a year and a half ago. By the way, this is the Coutura, C-O-U-T-U-R-A, Coutura model. This model has been around for a really long time because for many, many, many years, I wore this Seiko Coutura. Now you see something weird about this watch. Do what it says right there? Now when I turn it around, can you see what it says on the dial? That's right, it says Pulsar. And this is also a two-tone watch. Look how similar they are. This is more like Terminator 2 style, and this is much more subtle, but it's also back in the day was pretty aggressive looking. Now you'll also notice that this is not running. And but for a completely different reason than this. This has a dead battery. The reality is this is a Franken watch. This watch failed, been sitting in a drawer for I don't know. 15 years maybe. In fact, this is what got me into uh, rebuilding watches and getting back into the hobby. This very watch in my hand. I had an old Pulsar and just by chance, everything lined up. I had to make some modifications on the crown, but the dial was exactly the same color. The, the movement fit in perfectly. Or, oh, I'm sorry, this is a, a dial for one watch, a movement from another watch. A crown that I had to mess around with to get to work, but it does work. By the end of the video, I'll have it ticking next to this guy. So anyway, this is how I got started. So it was no surprise that I would wind up with a new one. And I gotta tell you, this is just so cool. The way it looks, the lines on it. I know it's a two-tone watch, and there are a lot of people out there that uh, won't go near anything that has any gold plating on it and I stay away from it almost exclusively. However, this was kind of like, a, uh, I don't know, an emotional kind of a purchase. I was okay with it. And another thing is I baby this thing and I barely wear it, which is kind of stupid. You buy an expensive watch and you don't wear it. Now when I say expensive, of course, it's not a Rolex. I don't want to get hit over the head by everyone telling me, what are you talking about? $700 is nothing for a watch. Well, for me it is. All right, so the official name of the watch is the Seiko Couture model number SNP108. They call it an auto quartz, so it has an automatic rotor. It's in a quartz movement. It's a caliber 7D48. They say it's 42 millimeters with all stainless steel uh, construction, inc including the bracelet. It has a hard Lex crystal, as almost all Seikos do. You know, unfortunately, in this price point, it kills me that Seiko's just will not put a sapphire crystal or at least a sapphire coated crystal on any of their watches. It kind of bugs me that they still just won't do it. It has luminous hands. You see the, you see the loom here and here. Well, of course, we're going to do a loom shot later. It has two sub dials. You have a 24 hour clock. You have the months of the year and you have the leap year indicator right here it's a two-tone gold and it's good for 100 meters water resistance but my guess is because of the construction of this watch um, and the screw down a case back that it probably would go a little more but who would really want to go swim swimming with this i don't know it has the date at the 12 o'clock position i love that i don't know why but i think this is the best place to put a date especially on this thing the dial has this really cool texture it's you know it's almost three-dimensional the indices are very pronounced there's loom dot around on the top of each one this particular watch the second hand lines up exactly with the indices it doesn't have it does have minor indices but they're extremely hard to see the bezel is deeply recessed so the thickness of the watch is a little bit thicker than a normal quartz watch would be. 
The bezel, outer bezel is removable. You'll see these little screws all the way around it here. I don't know if you can see those, which is another uh, unusual feature for this watch. It, it, it doesn't move. It's, it's fixed, obviously. It's screwed in, but it's another cool feature. You have your gold subdial here and a smaller subdial here. This is your 24 hour watch and this is the months. Again, perpetual calendar. You'll always know what month it is, what day it is, and what time it is. That's a good thing, right? Okay, they say this thing is 42 millimeters across. Let's see what my handy dandy Harbor Freight. Oh, look at that. Well, I'm not getting a little bit smaller than that. I'm getting about 41. And with the crown and this recess right here, I'm going to try and get all of that in there for a maximum width of 46. That's pretty bulky. <laughs> you know, lug to lug is hard on this because it has a bracelet that obviously you can't replace. It's custom to this particular watch. But let's try and see what we can get as far as some sort of lug to lug measurement. Don't worry about this thing getting scratched. It is all plastic. I'm getting 46 again. So it's 46 by 46 at its widest point. It is polished on the sides. It is all brushed down the middle. And then the center piece is polished again. The crown is a Cabochon crown is what they call it. It's plated with your little uh, black dot at the end. It is not a screwed down crown. That would make this watch almost perfect. And of course, like all quartz watches, it is hackable. And setting the time, once you get everything set, like daylight savings time, you just simply set it back an hour and it works perfectly. You don't have to worry about it until daylight saving time changes again. It does not do that part automatically. It's not that smart. Plus, it doesn't know what state you're in. In the United States, you never know. We're going to do something that I haven't done to this watch before in a little while here. We're going to open up the back and see what's inside there. Now, one thing I will tell you that I do not look at any of the videos on watches before I do reviews. I mean, there might be an issue where I watched a video that made me buy a watch, but I don't review videos before I do my own because I don't want to be jaded. And that sometimes leads me to make erroneous comments or I just, you know, slipped up and said something that I didn't mean to say. Uh, when you get to a certain age, that happens more and more. So if you do find an error in anything I say, please don't hesitate. Just throw it down below and I will respond. I try and respond to every single comment as long as it's not, you know, some stupid political thing or whatever, because I'll just delete that. So we're going to do some close ups, real close ups on this guy. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about this kind of close ups. I'm talking about under a scope. And then we are going to open this puppy up. Give me a minute. Now I'm opening up this baby for the first time and I try not to use anything real aggressive like this if I can avoid it. This has very sharp, sharp jaws on it and it will scratch the heck out of the back if I slip. So my first choice is always the ball. You can get these at a kid's store, uh, Toys R Us if you live on another planet or you can uh, order these on Amazon for way too much money. It's kind of sticky. I found out that if you have too much air in it, they don't work because they don't grip enough of the watch back. But if you just push really hard and twist, sometimes you get lucky. And boy, look at that. I got lucky. I'm opening this up for the first time, so I have no idea what this is going to look like. I have a feeling it's going to look like what I imagine, which is a rotor on a quartz movement. Let's see, you ready? Boom, and look at that. Now that is cool. Look at that. A rotor on a quartz movement. It's certainly a first for me, maybe a first for you too. The movement even looks cool. And what you normally find inside these watches is a lot of plastic. You don't find any plastic here. Somewhere under that rotor, and I'm gonna guess it's right 
here is the power cell, the, the rechargeable lithium battery right under here. God, uh, you know, I, I imagine it's going to fail at some point. But there it is. Look at that. How cool is that? We're going to put it on the scope. We'll get a really cool, good look at it. Be right back. Okay, so now you have to ask yourself, when was the last time you saw a quartz movement that had 16 joules? Well, you've seen one now. There's your movement number. There's, it says kinetic right on the rotor. Japan, the rotor looks kind of really hokey from, <laughs> from, from this distance. And you can see it's not finished real well. bunch of uh, little stepper motors everywhere in this thing capacitors stepper motors nothing fancy in here we're going to spin the rotor around you see the wheel right there and you see how it's turning and charging every time you move this thing it doesn't matter which way you move it it's turning a little wheel very quickly by the way i don't know what the ratio on this is but it's got to be at least I don't know, 20 to 1, maybe higher. It's pretty cool. As we come around the other side here, just because I know what it looks like, these two prongs right here, I don't know if I can focus in on those a little bit better. Yeah, these two prongs right here is what holds almost every battery in. It's the same on every quartz watch. They went one step further with putting a plate over it. This is, you know, for a quartz watch, I mean, it doesn't really get any better than this. I've seen some um, Swiss, Swiss, Swiss quartz watches that don't look near this good. And for those of you who have ever opened, the, uh, opened up any of these uh, quartz watches, you normally see a big, giant plastic spacer in between here. Somehow, they've managed to avoid that. Okay, you're going to flip it over, and normally I would just flip it over and go on, but I can't here because the bracelet is so bulky, it won't let the watch, and let me explain that to you a little bit better here. Um, when I go to put the watch down like this, it's going to be so high off the table that I'm going to have to adjust the scope again. Normally it would be flat, but that will be impossible with this watch, as you see. Be right back again. Now, how about that? What I thought were raised little gold lines is actually an optical illusion. It's something they did here with this wave pattern makes it seem like um, there are gold lines in here. In fact, there might be a little bit of a gold tin right in here, but it's just high and low valleys. Kind of looks like a bunch of records on its side, if anyone remembers what records are. Now, I will tell you I'm a little disappointed in looking at this, although you can't tell with the naked eye, you will, sorry about the glare, I can't do anything about that without taking the crystal out. You'll see that, boy, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of imperfections on this. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Okay, so looking at the um, bezel around the date, it's all kind of like dotted and scratched up and whatever. The applied logo, by the way, the bezel is applied. The applied logo looks actually very crisp and sharp. I don't see anything wrong with that. Let me try and mess with the light a little bit here. See if we can get a contrast that works properly. Well, it makes the letters look nicer, that's for sure. As we go around, Couture Kinetic Perpetual. Again, I have, you see the glare there. I'm trying to work with you there. And there's the calendar. And as you can see, it says it's February, which it is. And 24 hour mark. So it's getting close to my bedtime. Actually, it's way past my bedtime. Take a look at the hands. They're on different planes, so I have to keep focusing. The hands are actually better than that little bezel around the date. That's unfortunate. The hand, that, it's pretty much flawless. What do you guys think? 
There's a little dot right here. There's very few watches that I've found that are perfect in this regard. You see the hour hand moving very, very slowly. Um, you probably don't get to see that often. If you look here, you'll see on the large indices, you'll see little specks. Now we go to the smaller indices. Again, I have to focus again. Okay. And I don't know whether this is an optical illusion, but it looks like our little dot is not perfectly lined up there. Let me see if I can get a different angle on that. Mm, yep, it's off. See what happens when you look under, under a microscope? I'm doing this with you guys for the first time, so. And there it is. It's definitely off. Look at that. That's too bad. Let's look at our leap year indicator. So there will be one more year before this X1, X2, X3, X4, so the, the leap year is next year, according to that. And if you look here, now they're all off a little bit. So that means that this outer chapter ring, which is not part of the inner uh, chapter ring, is misaligned all the way around. And there are your screws for the bezel. You know, they're gold-plated, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it. They will get scratched. You can see the coin bezel very clearly here. And a couple of usage scratches. See, this is another thing. When you're looking at a microscope under really high light and magnification, you're going to see everything. Brush finishes are awesome, absolutely awesome. And I'm gonna try and clean this up. Back one more time. Okay, and there's your crown. I cleaned it up the best I could. It is scratched up, but it's nothing you can see with the naked eye, but it is what it is. And I've verified 100%. There is no gold of any kind running down here. It's just an illusion. That thing is actually fairly, the dial is actually fairly flat. They just have this gradient look going from very light to dark and it starts fading off back to light again. And there is your loom shot. The Seiko Couture is on the right and you'll have to wait for the reveal to see what's on the left. This is my rainy day watch. I wear it all the time when it's raining here in Southern California. So that means know, about six times a year. No, just kidding. If it's nasty weather, inclement weather, if I know I'm going to get wet in any way, this is the watch that I wear. Seiko is actually holding up pretty good. Nothing near the one on the left, though. By the way, this is on my wrist. <laughs> there you go. The Citizen Eco Drive. Love this watch. I will have a link to it right here, the review that I did on that. This is one of my favorite watches. Probably gets the most activity of any of the videos that I've done. And I know through my partner uh, program with Amazon, uh, a lot of people look at this watch from the links below. So feel free to look. If you do uh, actually buy anything from Amazon from the links below, you will contribute to my hobby. I might get like 50 cents or a dollar. So, you know, who knows? Might retire another second or two early. Okay, let's wrap this sucker up. All right, so this is what this watch looks like on my roughly six and a quarter, six and three inch wrist, depending on what I ate today. And it actually fits pretty flat. You know what? We forgot to do one measurement, which is the thickness, duh. So what do you guys think? I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's futuristic looking. I love the dependability of it. The features are second to none. The uniqueness, second to none. The auto quartz, as they call it. I really love this thing. You guys let me know what you think below. Like I said, I try and get back to everyone. I might not do it immediately. I am still recovering from surgery, so some days I really don't feel like doing anything. Give me your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. Your subscriptions are what keep me going. 
and throw up a little slide here. You'll see I'm selling some very cheap, inexpensive watches on eBay. Take a look for a family member or friend or a loved one. Well, maybe not a loved one. Let's stick to family member or friend. All right, there you go. The Seiko Couture. We hope you enjoyed the video.